Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. I'm Andy Michaud. That's Matt Hatfield. It's November, which means playoffs are coming up. We've got teams tuning up for the playoffs. We got other teams scrapping to get in. It's exciting. The final week of the regular season, Andy, and we start in Chesapeake as the Indian River Braves play host to the Western Branch Bruins. Western Branch at five and four overall. Indian River eight and one. Only blemish was to Oscar Smith in heartbreaking fashion. Two teams trying to get in the postseason. Indian River's already there. Western Branch playing for its postseason lives. All right, we'll get it started here. Jacob Wilson on the rollout, still rolling, throwing downfield, finds Maurice Davis. That's a 19 yard gain. The senior tight end, a major target for quarterback Jacob Wilson, who's committed to play his college football at Bucknell. And Wilson here with three touchdown passes coming into the night. He's going to make it four on the year as he finds Karan Claggett, the junior, for a 15 yard scoring strike and the visiting Bruins on the board first. Nice catch over the shoulder. Not done yet. Wilson rolling again. A lot of throws on the roll. Finds Nate Lewis. Is he down? No, he's not down. He's going to keep running. 17 yards on the score. Nate Lewis keeps the feet going. 14 nothing. And the presence of mind is needed. Not hit the ground. It was on the defender, so he kept it alive there. Indian River trying to rally behind their quarterback, Tyree Givers. Wilson he throws over the middle, and it is bobbled by Kyron Best, picked off by senior linebacker Armand Jones. And when it gets deflected in the air, good things don't happen to the team throwing it. Yeah, you hold your breath when it's up in the air like that. We got two quarterbacks named Wilson. It's the battle of the Wilsons. This is a handoff, though, and it's Keith Bryant. Little flip backwards over the middle into the end zone. 12 yard rush. And look at that. Western Branch all over the Braves, 21 0. Against a defense only allowing seven points per game on the year. Impressive by Western Branch. And you're ever not going to throw in the towel as Tyree Givers Wilson will scramble here for a three yard touchdown run before the break. It's 21 7. No, only down 14 before halftime. Or are they? Western Branch trying to get one more score before intermission. Here's the other Wilson again rolling, again throwing, and it's Davis behind him sliding catches. He got it. He got it. Touchdown, 16 yard pass, 28 to 7 as we head to the third. So Jacob Wilson in one half of football has equaled his touchdown pass total from the previous nine games with three. And you're never trying to get a touchdown pass. However, Best will be incomplete. Best had a touchdown catch in all nine games coming in. 28-7, Western Branch on top late in the third period. And now the Braves will run it with Ty and Smith up the middle. Oh, he is good up the middle. 33-yard touchdown run for Smith. And it's now 28-14, inching closer. Getting there, they cut the lead down. Still plenty of time left. Ensuing kickoff. We always say that and it's always dramatic and this is what happens when you have a dramatic kickoff. Xavion Hunt, 87 yards. Is he gonna get it? He's gonna get it. 87 yard kick return touchdown. Just ekes it in, bad angle taken. And it's 35-14. Coach Greg Gibson afterwards said that was the backbreaker. Indian River 35 to 14 on fourth down will be intercepted. If that wasn't the backbreaker, Armand Jones' second interception might have been the dagger. That one hurts. Indian River still trying to come back in this. A little bit of time left though. 14-35. Givers Wilson once again. Can he get something going? Got a man open and that's underthrown. Kirshawn Beeman with the interception. Third interception of the night for Givers Wilson. They just a turnover play game for the Braves. And Western Branch plus four in the turnover department. When you do that, good things generally happen. They had a lot of turnovers through a three and four start, but they go into the playoffs on a three game winning streak as the Bruins defeat Indian River, who falls to eight and two. Jacob Wilson with three touchdown passes, one of them to Maurice Davis, while Ty and Smith runs for 172 yards and a score in the loss for the Braves. On to Oscar Smith. Where Grassfield has come into town, they're trying to get some momentum, and Oscar Smith trying to tune up for the playoffs. Opening kickoff here is going to be returned by Shaquem Hussey. And oh, there he is. There he goes. Out across midfield, gets a block, cuts it back, gets some more blocks. Still on his feet. Is he going to take it all the way back? No, he's caught from behind, but he gets it to the 37 into Grassfield territory. The young sophomore's got some shake and bake to him, some wiggle, as people like to say. Coach Rich Morgan relying on a number of underclassmen. There is the junior quarterback, Sean Mitchell, to Larry Chappell, and that will set up the Tigers with a chance to score here third and short. But there is Joseph Hardy in that Grassfield defense hanging up. It's now fourth and one. D'Angelo White, he's going to try to get in, and he is not in. Stop, Fred Beeman. Patrick Jones, stuff him on the goal line. A stand for the Grizzlies. Look at that. Get up. Come on. Let's go. Oh, they're excited. Marty Asprey's team trying to bounce back from that 
tough loss at home to Nance River. And Grant Holloway is the guy you want to get to as much as possible. Look at the speed and the stride. High step into the end zone. 81 yards from quarterback Justice Bigby. Grant Holloway as lethal a playmaker as they get. Well, you got that guy on your team. You're always in the game. Oh, slipped on the extra point, but it's still good. It's not hard to kick it. You can slip on every put. Yeah, like a banana peel right there before he kicked that thing. 7 0 Grassfield with the lead. And there's that Grassfield defense again playing very inspired. Darius Hagens as they hold the Tigers without a point in the first quarter. Much better against the run than they were against the Warriors. He didn't slip on that play. Got nothing on that. Here's, we're ready to go. We're good. Come on. We still got it. Fourth down, Western Branch. Not in this game. This is Oscar Smith. <laughs> Oscar Smith back to throw. It is Mitchell over the middle on fourth down. And it's dropped by Chapel. He had a shot at it. Chance to get on the board, but Grassfield's even hanging tough. Although that snap will not help matters as Hagens loses some yards and Grassfield going the other way. Now fourth down, they're going to have to punt. And Oscar Smith's special teams been special all year, Andy, as Jameek Jones blocks it. Brandon Delbridge scoops it up and goes 19 yards for the first touchdown of the night for Oscar Smith. And they keep getting it done on special teams this year. Momentum shifter. Cole Gibson, though, tries to get the momentum back the other way. That's a long one. 43-yard field goal is good, and it's 10 to 7. Grassfield with the lead going to the second half, and there is Oscar Smith's defense now stepping it up as they sack the quarterback there, Ivan Jones and company. And now it's Josh Gray on the receiving end of Sean Mitchell's 11-yard touchdown pass. You can't keep that aerial attack down for long at Oscar Smith. Now in front, 14 to 10. A lot of talent there. Now they want to try to come back into this. This is Big B rolling out. Looking for, uh oh, he's not looking for that. He gets hammered in the backfield. And Oscar Smith's defense comes up big. Remember, only one starter back from last year for the Tigers on defense in Jaquez Edie. This time the pass is incomplete, blanketed. Right there is Larry Chapel on Racy Lucas. And that allows them to go with the bomb. Sean Mitchell going to air it out deep. And he has his man Chapel streaking down for a 62 yard touchdown. Good job. Knocks away a pass on defense, beats a man, catches a pass on offense, and they'll score 21 to 10 now. Chapel making up for that pass in the end zone. He didn't haul in as he stepped up ever since. And then right here, look at the great play he makes here as he rips the ball away from Jalen Foskey. Larry Chapel, the junior, stepping up in a major way on the regular season finale. Senior night for Oscar Smith as they try to put it away now. They give it to Courtney Johnson in the red zone, trying to get his way into the end zone. Going to be one yard short. So what do you do, Andy? Well, you might as well give it to him again. Worked the first time. They do give it to him again. And this time, it's a one yard touchdown run. 28 to 10. Tigers extend the lead. Not quite done yet. We got one more shot. 47 yarder from Cole Gibson. You can kick a 47 yarder. We'll put you on. Got that's a, good a pretty, leg. Yeah, it's a pretty good kick there. Final 28 13, Oscar Smith over Grassby. Oscar Smith finishes the regular season unbeaten. 82 straight now in the Southeastern District in the regular season. Josh Gray with 124 yards receiving from quarterback Sean Mitchell as they win it there. When we come back, Andy, it's Salem Pulaski County and Cox at practice with Ocean Lakes right here on Sports Report. Back here on Sports Report alongside Andy Michaud, I am Matthew Hatfield. It's now an undefeated clash in Roanoke as the Salem Spartans take on the Pulaski County Cougars to Willis Whitefield. We go over 9,000 in attendance. You know it's going to be a big one. And they know it's going to be a big run when they hand it off to the big guy. They call him a fullback. I don't see fullback run like that. It's Alex Ramsey with a 22-yard run that he hands it off to his partner who takes the pitch on the outside. That is Dante Claiborne with an 8-yard touchdown run. Salem on top early, 7 to nothing. What a luxury it is for Coach Steven Magenbauer to have a one-two punch like Ramsey and Claiborne, and then also a defense that sniffs out the run like they do with Tyler Close and Nick Hood there on Hunter Thomas. Pulaski County's offense really held in oh. check early on, and the snapping not helping them out either. Bryant, Bryant Grubb retreats off the bad snap there. And here's Beckley. They can throw it, too. He rolls out, fires downfield. Fiante Tucker wide open for the grab. 35-yard touchdown. 14-0 Salem on top now. Uh, Tucker's got the hands. He's got the speed. And Salem's got a 14-point lead. And guess what? They're not finished because there's that bruiser again. Alex Ramsey, he's a bruiser, and he can break away from guys. Look at him scamper. 82 yards before he's finally dragged down by Thomas doing double duty playing offense and defense. What a run. 
Now he's so tired though, he gotta, he's gotta come out. So they just hand it off to Claiborne. Claiborne goes left, uh oh, nothing left. Wait, oh, let's go right. Oh, there's nobody on the right. Touchdown! Three yard run for Claiborne. Good vision and cutback. It's 21 to nothing. Salem all over. They went one way, then they went the other way, and they said, What do you want from me? There's the defense getting gashed by the run, and now it's going to be the Pulaski County offense finally gashing the Salem defense here with Hunter Thomas's 48 yard scoring run. And Pulaski County getting closer. It's 21 to 6. Spartans still in the lead, but Pulaski County trying to make a comeback. A lot of time left in this one. We'll toss it to Claiborne up the middle, cuts it back, and that's a lot of green. It's a whole lot of yards in front of him and behind him as he goes 80 yard a touchdown run. 28 to six, Claiborne with a big run, look at the speed. Salem is wearing on those referees and the sidelines having to chase them running down the field. That's what's really hurting them here. Now you see the Pulaski County offense, they're not going in the right direction and it'll set up a punt here. And this one goes straight up in the air. Where is it gonna land? Nobody knows, just get away from it. Don't touch it and it bounces finally. Ooh. Down at the 30 yard line, just a four yard boot. They could have gone backwards even further than that, actually. A pretty good play to stop it where it was. Here's Ramsey, nobody's stopping him. Easy run for him, makes it look easy anyway. 21 yard run, 35 to 6 now. 35 to 6, Salem is cruising, and Deontay Tucker with his second touchdown of the night, a 23 yard scoring catch from Beckley. It's now a 36 point advantage to begin the fourth quarter. That means the clock's running. Well, you know, they're not giving up yet, Pulaski. And well, Pulaski's gonna keep running. Jamal Edwards to the outside, breaks away. Is he gonna get in? He does get in. 38 yard touchdown run, 42 to 13 now. 42 to 13 in Pulaski County. Again, backed up with rough field position here as another errant snap goes over the quarterback's head. He downs it at the two yard line. You, you can't really punt from there because it didn't, the punt didn't work out the first time. So let's yeah. just air it out. Give it a shot. Throw it deep and see what happens. It's Grubb going up top, and he's got his man, JT Thompson, who hauled it in at the 37 yard lines and runs an additional 15 yards into Salem territory. They're going to try one more shot here. We're going to run it up the middle. Well, there's a lot of, a lot of dark jerseys up the middle. Nothing happening there. Not a lot going on for Pulaski's offense all game. And there's your final, 42 to 13. That'll do it as Salem wins behind Alex Ramsey and company. Patrick Henry Roanoke, a 71 to 24 victor over Carroll County as Quashawn Coffey throws seven touchdowns and 372 yards, Ooh. a month's night in one game there for him. But we now head to Virginia Beach, Andy. Yeah, we got a lot of touchdowns from Coffey. You get a lot of touchdowns from Ocean Lakes offense. Is a team getting ready to head into the playoffs. You got to catch up to them in practice, see how things are going. We're here at Ocean Lakes High School in Virginia Beach, home of the nationally ranked and defending state champion Dolphins. Before the season started though, Ocean Lakes experienced some off the field adversity as head coach Chris Scott was suspended for the first five games. They managed to not miss a beat without their head coach. And now with the field general back, they have their eyes on a second straight state title. <laughs> Here with Ocean Lakes head football coach Chris Scott. Last year you guys won the state championship. It seems like this year you guys won even more though, not just a state title repeat, but national rankings and just to even live up to the best team perhaps in Virginia Beach history. I think that's definitely, um, when you look at some of our goals and the potential of this team, I think that offensively and defensively and special teams, I think it definitely could rank itself up there. I think uh, in regards to goals, um, you know, we talked to our guys last year a lot about being a champion. You have to be a champion before you're actually crowned a champion or before you're actually put the ring on. Oh, you know, this team so far we're good, but we can be great, you know, just uh, keep playing as a team and uh, keep performing great every week. And, uh, and uh, you know, for us, uh, state championship, that's the limit. Uh, you know, I think we can win that. Speed, we have speed all around the board. Uh, we're very disciplined. Uh, we try to limit our flags and stuff like that. And um, with our discipline comes knowledge and we have cats that can make plays all around the board. That's what's unique about us. Really, at the end of the day, if, if you don't have a team, you, you can't win. So it's really, it's, it's everybody that comes together to win. It's not just one person. Well, we, we don't train for the best situation. We train for the worst. Losing is not an option with us. Um, that we're dogs and we, we really want this. We really want the state championship and we will not give up at all. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Yeah, 
What's it been like playing for Coach Scott? Playing for Coach Scott has been surreal. It's a, uh, it's just a great experience. He went here. He played here. He's everything you want a high school coach. Just, just great. He has a passion for the game, stronger than anybody on the team. He stays here after hours, sleeps at the school. I think it seems like so. You know, it's just it's great working for someone who wants to work for you. Each opponent has has its challenges on the field and off the field. If we can stay consistent to that, that allows us to get better. Worry about us concentrate on one and know and prepares us that when we get into that playoff season you're you're focusing on being one and know because you're not promised the next week so I think that's the biggest mindset and biggest key to our continued success and going on further is just to stay consistent in that follow the Dolphins and their journey to Charlottesville right here on Sports Report for Cox at practice I'm Matthew Hatfield And stay with us right after the break. We go across the water to the peninsula for more action, plus some power rankings for the playoffs coming up. And we welcome you back to Sports Report with Andy Michal. I am Matthew Hatfield. Well, Andy, we now go to John B. Todd Stadium in Newport News, the Kickatan Warriors taking on the Woodside Wolverines. Both teams jockeying for playoff positioning. Kickatan in Group 5A, Woodside in Group 6A. And, you know, this was going to be a tight one. These two get together. And right off of the bat, it's Tamir Walker to the outside and turns on the speed. Not quite enough good defense there to finally take him down, but it's a 23-yard gain to start it off. Tamir got one of those Player of the Week plaques earlier in the season. He's had a fine season for Coach Danny Dodson's team, and so has quarterback Tyre Tyler, this time connecting with wide receiver Jakari Lee inside the 15 and inside the 5. Now it'll be the running back Walker again with a three-yard touchdown plunge. Woodside on the board first, 7-0. Think of Dan trying to come back to Desmond Savage, the quarterback, off the play fake, fires downfield, finds Caleb Tucker. That's a first down, 16-yard gain. Worked the first time, we'll try it again. Savage this time drops back, finds Tucker again. 17-yard pickup there inside the red zone. And when you get in the red zone, give it to the guy named Jason Fugate. He usually finds his way into the end zone. 15 to 8, so after a seven-point first quarter, the scoring is starting to pick up in a big way in the second period. And Tyre Tyler, the escape artist he is, look at him scramble around here, make guys miss and take off. It looks like it's going to be, it is going to be a 70-yard touchdown run. What an effort. It looks like a broken play almost, and he just takes off up the middle. There's nobody there. 29 to 8 as we move later on. Not quite done yet. Kikitan says, hold on, we got this guy. This guy right here named Fugate. He knows how to find the end zone. This time he goes right up the middle, treads flowing behind him. 67 yard touchdown run for Fugate. And now we got a game again, 29-15. That's Fugate's 19th total touchdown of the season. What a year he's having. And Desmond Savage, give him time to throw. He will find open people. Keith Grandy with a 12 yard pickup here as Kikatan is marching again on offense. Offensive line giving Savage enough time to fire it down the field. And there's Grandy again with a reception inside the 10. And now here they are, fourth and one. Savage needing to complete this to keep the comeback going. Mm. And they do, caught by Caleb Tucker. We're dead Locked at 29. Wide open on that. That pylon's not going to cover him. It's Tashir Lasseter to Sean Lasseter. He gets to the outside. 65 yards. Nobody around. Right. The referee can't even catch up to him. 65 yard touchdown run. 35 29. And the Wolverines are trying to pull this out to go to 7 3 and secure a home game in the first round of the playoffs at Todd Stadium next week. Kikatan has other ideas with their playoff hopes. Still in up in the air, and there's Savage showing off his scramble ability as he gets it into the red zone as Kikatan once again starting to show the balance, running in passing, and here is Savage with the aerial fireworks, and there's a touchdown catch for Grandy, 18 yards. Man, nobody's playing defense in the backfield there. Savage again here, trying to get something done, and no, no, he dropped it. It's picked up by D'Angelo Chesson in a tie game. He's on the run. Can he get there? He's starting to slow down, look for some blockers. Still going inside the 30. Still going inside the 20, looking at a gas. Oh, he drops it, but it's picked up though. Good job by Woodside, humps back on top of it, and it sets up 
A game-changing play there by Chess and setting up the go-ahead field goal by Chad Mitchell from 26 yards out with 2.19 to play. And that would be the eventual game winner as Woodside holds off Kikatan 38 to 36 in a doozy. Tyler with 206 total yards and two touchdowns while Savage throws two of his three touchdowns to Caleb Tucker. Ah, heartbreaking way to end that one. As we move to Chesapeake now, Great Bridge at Hickory. Neither team in playoff contention, so at this point they're just playing for pride, trying to finish out their year on a winning note. And early on it'll be a turnover, Hickory coughing it up, Great Bridge scooping it up, and that'll set up A.J. Fromelt's 40-yard field goal. Fromelt kicking, also playing quarterback for the Wildcats. He's pretty busy out there, three to nothing early lead. It's a quick pass to the outside, that's a call. Inside the run, still going to the 20, to the 30, and they finally drag him down. That'll set up Shaheem Lyles. He gets the inside handoff, five yards up the middle, or down inside the five. And now Great Bridge will finish off this drive with Noah Roberts, the touchdown. So the Wildcats, who just notched their first win a week ago over Deep Creek, with a 10-point lead late in the opening period, can special teams get Hickory back in the mix? Look at that ball, it just stopped. It picked up by Austin Wood. I can get a golf ball to do that. How do you do it with a football? Not done yet. Here's Fromel in the air and, uh oh, that's the wrong color shirt. That is Tommy Martin taking it the other way. One guy got a chance to get him, not gonna get him. 90 plus yards on the interception return. Touchdown for Tommy Martin, 10 to seven. Well, that's a momentum shifter for the host Hickory Hawks and Hickory now going to hand it off to Eric Gamboni. Get a little bit of blocking there as the Hawks running game starting to get it going. Hickory will settle for a field goal from Martin, 21 yards, and it is up and through. So it is tied up at 10 late in the second quarter. Martin gets interceptions, touchdown, he kicks field goals. Here's Jackson Childress to, guess who, Tommy Martin, 60 yards on the pass reception. This guy's doing everything for him. It's 17-10 Tommy Martin over Great Bridge. You know, Jupiter Wilson at halftime said he's my favorite. Martin Hickory with a seven-point lead, and Martin might not be done. Great Bridge trying to mount a comeback behind the armor for Melt, and uh-oh, he threw it to Martin. He's on the other team. He's the guy scoring oh. touchdowns. That's not the guy you want to throw it to as he finally gets dragged out. No, he doesn't. He laddles it to Steven Anderson. Throw it back to Martin. He'll score. Willie, Walty, Great Bridge trying to stop him. Eventually, they will knock him out of bounds. <laughs> It's Miami, except without the blocks in the back and the kneel down lateral. The Hawks win it. Steven Anderson, Tommy Martin leading the way while Great Bridge finishes up the year 1-9. and AJ from Melt with two field goals and a touchdown run for the Wildcats. Player of the week, none other than Devin Campbell of York High School. 339 total yards, three touchdowns as the Falcons roll past Jamestown 55-7. That's a lot of yards. It's a lot of yards. And Andy? Looks like the playoffs are right around the corner, so let's check out some of these postseason matchups. Kellum and Oscar Smith, Grassfield, Woodside, Bayside, Cox in a rematch, while Ocean Lakes plays host to Red Hot Western Branch. 5A South, conferences 9 and 10, Maury at Hampton, Nesman River will go to Norview, Bethel will go to Indian River, a little slow start, but the Braves in at the 2-3 seed, Kinkatan goes to Salem. Keep an eye on that norview Nansman game. 4A East, Denby goes to unbeaten Lake Taylor, Kings Fork and Smithfield in a rematch. Grafton plays host to Heritage, while Churchland takes on undefeated Lafayette. We could be on a collision course, Lake Taylor and Lafayette. Big battle there in the 3A East, it is Tab going to Phoebus, War Hill at Pocosin, Lakeland to Parkview South Hill, and Colonial Heights goes to number four, York. War Hill might spring an upset. They took Pocosin a double overtime this year. 6A North, South County's undefeated, maybe the favorite there, but Lake Braddock, Westville, watch out for them, both lurking at nine and one apiece. 5A North. You got Massapanax and Tuscarora unbeaten. They could be on a collision course. Broad run at 8 and 3 overall. Number 4 seed who could be the sleeper in that bracket. To keep rolling with the 4A West. Jefferson Forest gets the number 1 seed. John Champ followed by Salem who we saw earlier and Shirendo. Seven teams 9 and 1 or better in 4A West. It is a loaded bracket out there. And 3A West, Andy, it's Western Albemarle, the top seed at 9-1. Watch out for Lord Botetot at 9-1. And, and Magna Vista, the defending state champion, they're the number four seed. So it should be a fun postseason for Andy Michal. I'm Matt Hatfield. We'll catch you next week in the postseason on Sports Report.